I assume this happens in Florida more than it does in other places. You come out at night, you turn on some lights in your home, and you see a cockroach scatter and come out when the lights are on. Uh, that is my introduction for Mike Schur. As soon as the Miami Heat lose seven games, what happens? Look who reemerges with that beautiful head of hair, Mike Schur, to write on behalf of the program. One of the most esteemed writers anywhere in television history has decided to do a January observations. Did the Heat win a game in January? Did they win any games in January? Because, uh, Mike Schur, I'm assuming you're here only because the Miami Heat lost seven in a row that's not true i'm here because i've made some observations about meadowlark media in the month you had in january it's february 1st it's the appropriate time to give you those observations and here here i am that has nothing to do with the miami i just don't remember december observations i don't remember (laughs) november observations i don't remember october or september observations but here we go are we ready are we ready to do this january observations from mike sure i mean relatively it's very popular. Yeah. Everybody loves it when he does this because he just roasts all of us. Look at him. Look at look how stoic he is because he knows he's got it all lined up. He's using his greatest gift, his greatest tool to samurai sword us. Go ahead. Do I don't I don't get the intro anymore? No, not anymore. <laughs> I searched for it. Right. That was, that's why I said relatively. <laughs> Mike Schur's observations. Well done. Wait a minute. Go get it more from the loins. Hold on a second. Let's try it again. You are listening to Mike Schur's weekend observations from January. It's just Joe Tessitore. You are listening live to Mike Schur talk about things from January. January observations is brought to you by... Tony's Things to Ponder File. (laughs) Do you like Tony's NFL Top 5 but think it contains a little too much insight and is a little too interesting? (laughs) Try Tony's Things to Ponder File. (laughs) Dan! They had a championship pedigree. But after a rocky start this year, we wrote them off. They seem to have lost a step. Maybe the league had caught up to them. Maybe their roster was getting old. But then, just like always, they flip that switch. And Dan, just like that, make no mistake about it, the Tampa Bay Lightning (laughs) are back. Yeah, terrifying. (laughs) Eight of their last nine. They're haunting. The Miami Heat are better without Tyler Hero. It's just a shame Miami never made him available (laughs) in trade talks. The Miami Heat are better without Terry Rozier, which is kind of a problem because they just traded for Terry Rozier. Uh, Terry Rozier, negative 72 in his first 114 minutes for the Heat. Ouch. Scary. (laughs) <laughs> hey the heat won last night congrats guys yes yeah scary terry chipping in with a harder and three points and 30 minutes on the floor <laughs> on the left is dame lillard on the right is terry rozier they look pretty similar okay guys yeah great good work you traded for prime dame lillard good job victor Wembanyama last night 21 and 8, six blocks, two steals, two of five from three in 30 minutes. Or as Mike Ryan would call it, eh. <laughs> the SEC just filed charges against three people who stole $1.9 billion in a fraudulent crypto scheme. You'll never guess where one of them lives. <laughs> I'm surprised all three of them don't live here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's only, Miami. That's only, you did get. Only one. Yeah, of good them? work by you. Oh, only one of them. That's an <laughs> upset. Them. I would have absolutely. Yeah, I would have absolutely guessed. If, uh, four of them were in Miami. Four <laughs> of the three. One point nine billion dollars. That's the most money someone from Miami has stolen since Eric Spolster signed his <laughs> extension. I thought you'd go Samson there. <laughs> I almost went Robinson. Oh. Yeah, you take your pick. <laughs> Coach Spo. Bubble fraud. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What happened there? What happened? <laughs> the Angelos family bought the Baltimore Orioles for $173 million and are reportedly selling them for $1.73 billion. Someone please reassure a no doubt worried David Sampson that after all those terrible sad years of losing money, the Angelos family is finally going to eke out a profit. <laughs> Put it on the poll, Juju. Uh, does asbestos pay? Because I'm pretty sure that's where the Angelos fortune comes from. Speaking of David Sampson, how many times do we have to hear the story of him pooping in the military guy's house during a marathon? I thought it was only two. I thought yesterday was no. only the second time. He <laughs> said it's its most shameful moment. He's talked about it on the show, I swear, like six times. We do a Death. Lot of show. Can't remember everything. <laughs> Taxes. And David Sampson telling the story about pooping in the military guy's house. According to the Heat front office, Duncan Robinson is absolutely untouchable in trades, which in Miami front office speak means they have offered him to literally everyone. You know what the A in Duncan stands for, Dan? I, available. That's right. It stands oh, for available well to done. anyone who will take him. Well done. Good job by you. I'm on my game. The Miami Heat lost seven in a row. Offense is a mess. Defense is a mess, which is going to make it all the more incredible when they reach the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> Tua Tunga Vailoa. Do it in the playoffs. Tyreek Hill. Do it in the playoffs. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Do it in the Super Bowl. And then do it in the Super Bowl two more times. <laughs> and then do it in the Super Bowl again. And you'll have done it in the Super Bowl nearly as many times <laughs> as Tom Brady. Here come the Pelicans. <laughs> Devin Booker. 60 Burger. Giannis. 50 Burger and 60 Burger. Carl Anthony Towns. The rare 60 Burger with a side of L. <laughs> Joel Embiid, 70 burger, Luca, 73 burger. The NBA isn't a league anymore. It's a damn Wendy's. <laughs> you know what the B in NBA stands for, Dan? Burgers. It stands for burger. That's a good job by you. Two for two. Watch out for the 49ers. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Yeah. What if the season that? ended if the season ended today, they'd be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> They're favored. It's <laughs> not how the Dan. watch out works. That's not that's not how it works. It's exactly how the watch out works. <laughs> Dan, this week Stu Gatz had an all timer. He called the legendary coach of Liverpool FC Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> Jurgen, <laughs> like the hand lotion. <laughs> That's right. Yet amazingly, that does not crack the list of worst name mispronunciations in show history. Top five wrong names wow. in show history. Wow, going into the historic data bank. All right. O-L-I, Jurgen Club. <laughs> Number five, James Mulvaney. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Elamin Hassan. <laughs> Sorry, Hassan, rather. Hassan. Sorry to mess up your name, Elamin. You know I got love and respect for you. <laughs> Inside jokes, he means Stephen A. Number three, Afrini Hardaway. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Tony never lived that one down. <laughs> That's number three. <laughs> That's Tony, number three. Tony calling Anthony Hardaway. Seriously, reading off of a, reading off the computer. A Freeney. A Freeney. Number three. He and then then trying to cover it by just naming eight other guys <laughs> yeah. who are on that team. <laughs> just blowing through it. Just just pounding through it. Just tweeting through it as fast as he could. Number two. Amino acid. Side joke was he me and the Godfather. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and the number one mispronunciation of a name on the show's history. 80. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, Lucy, he saw Bo. Stugat saw Bo on a call screener and said 80. We'll go Are out you serious? <laughs> Let's go out to yeah. 80. Let's go 80 out to 80 on a mobile. <laughs> and Billy, that's Bo. <laughs> Blink 192 didn't even make wow. a lie. Yeah. yeah. How amazing. It's my list. You James, have your list, James I have my list. James Mulvaney represents where I see the descent of my life, saying it's calling John Mulaney James Mulvaney while holding a turkey that was stick. A, that was a watershed for you. That was a, that was there's like a before and after of yeah. your competence. Yeah. And it's James Mulvaney. <laughs> yep. Dan. Keep an eye on the Edmonton Oilers. Great on the four check. Yep. Great coaching experience guard play. <laughs> Don't be surprised if the Edmonton Oilers find themselves in the Elite Eight. Yes. <laughs> the Oilers. Leon Dreisaitl and them boys. <laughs> making a run, Dano. This is my audition to be a guest on Roy's new hockey segment. It's a great comedic, uh, comedic name. Uh, Roy's in Toronto. Uh, we don't know if we're going to get a hockey show, but he's in Toronto on Metal Arc's dime. Maybe we'll have a hockey fill in? show. I don't know. Yes, I can I, fill I, in. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about Leon Dreisaitl and them boys. <laughs> Folks, I believe everyone should do whatever makes them happy. I believe in free speech. Much like the great Boston sports fan Dana White. He's a personal hero of mine. However... If you get offended when someone holds your college logo upside down or replaces the word up with the word down in your college slogan, you are a child and you should rethink your entire life and all of the choices you have made that have gotten you to this point. <laughs> Where'd you go? Harvard? <laughs> Inter Miami. Lost their first three preseason friendlies with Messi and Luis Suarez. Inter Miami. The Miami is strong in you. <laughs> Dan Levitard had a couple hours to spare recently. So we decided to take his wife to a quiet riot concert. <laughs> what the hell was he thinking? <laughs> I know what Valerie was thinking. She was thinking I'm in hell. <laughs> and speaking of hell... Art Bryles. Dan, those are the January observations. Uh, we always appreciate that you do that. Stugatz, by the way, read the internet wrong because he told me that Quiet Riot's lead singer was 52. No chance. He was in 2007 when he died. So I suppose maybe he's still 52 if we stop counting at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he stopped right at 52, I guess. Yeah. <laughs>